welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another monthly meal prep video. So I do these twice a month. I've been doing them for quite a while now. I actually have a playlist of a lot more videos like this, which I'll link below. But if you're new here, basically what I do is about every two weeks, I make up a bunch of things that I put in my freezer that I can either reheat in the microwave, the oven, or my air fryer. And a lot of the stuff is basically things that we would do for lunch or like stuff that would kind of be for in between meals since I do cook almost every evening. Another thing that I do is I try to avoid using too much sugar in things. I also do some gluten friendly things just because we have gluten sensitivity in our house and just try to stay more healthy all around. I just think about it this way. If I'm at the grocery store and I'm gonna grab a bag of frozen nuggets and be reheating something like that, why not make my own bag of something frozen like broccoli tots or something like that that my kids can enjoy and I know what's in it and I know all the ingredients I chose and bought myself. So I think that's all you need to know about what type of video this is. It's something I wanted to show you guys that I'm gonna be using today. You all have been after me about ideas and ways that I can do frozen things without using too many plastic bags that you're throwing away. So I got myself some gallon silicone that's block bags. I don't know why that was hard to say, but <laughs> some gallon silicone that's block bags. So I will leave the link for these below. They are from Amazon and they, ooh, they kind of look like this. They basically seem like they have a good seal on the top. They say that they're great for freezers and I'm gonna be testing them out. One of the reasons I like to use Ziploc bags is number one, it saves a lot of space in my freezer. And number two, if it's something that I wanna thaw out like soup, so say I have chili in here, I can just drop this into like some hot water and it will start to thaw out and then I can kind of break up the frozen soup and dump it into a pan. So it's just a little easier than having it in a container where you're trying to struggle to get it out. So I'm gonna use these today and then in my next monthly meal prep video which will be in two weeks from now i do them about every other sunday i will let you guys know what i think about them The first thing that we're starting on is I'm actually making some of my mashed cauliflower. So I've made this before in videos, but I've never done it for the freezer. I do it a lot just for dinner, you know, as a side. So I got two of these loaf pans and I'm using two heads of cauliflower in hopes that it's enough for both loaf pans. I think it's going to be good. So basically what I do is I put them in my pressure cooker. You can do this on the stove as well. The only thing with doing them on the stove is that it can make them a little more soggy and this is why I love using my pressure cooker or some people have Instapots. They're all the same thing, just different brands. So basically you just put the full head of cauliflower in here and in this case I have two and then you put about a cup or I might put a little more since I have a bigger pot here. So maybe two cups of water in the bottom and then you put it onto high pressure, you let it get up there and you just put it in for a minute. So basically you build it up to pressure, let it sit there for a minute on high and then it will turn off and then slowly do a natural release. I let it natural release around eight minutes and then you can open it up, dump the water out and I'll show you the rest of the steps from there on. So I wanna get this going, I wanna get it up to pressure while I'm working on the next recipe. So I'm going to start this and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. The next thing we're 
going to do is something I've wanted to try for a while. So I don't know if they still have them, but Dunkin' Donuts used to have a thing that you could order that was basically like a soft taco like this, folded over with just egg and cheese, or like sometimes I think you could get sausage inside of them. Um, just a really simple like breakfast kind of food. So I'm thinking I'm going to try this out for my daughters. I want to make a side note here just because I do a lot of gluten-free stuff. This is not gluten-free. I believe you can purchase soft tacos like this gluten-free, but I was in a hurry and not everybody in our house has gluten sensitivity so there's some that can eat it and so I just grabbed these uh, you could try this with corn tacos but I think it would get them kind of crunchy I don't think they would freeze well um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fry up some scrambled eggs and just do cheese and egg with these and then lay them out flat and flash freeze them somebody asked me recently what flash freezing means because I use that term a lot basically it means that you lay whatever you're going to freeze out first on a tray or something just to get it frozen so that you can put it all in one bag and they won't stick together and freeze in a big chunk so that's what flash freezing means and I'm just going to whip up some eggs and do these super quick just a really simple breakfast idea
egg mess going on here, but it's still producing what I wanted. So over here, I had to kind of figure out that I needed to fold them in half and kind of pinch them off, give them a crease in the middle so that they could fold over nice and easy. And then I'm taking my spatula and I'm kind of pressing them as I go. I have this on very low heat, like right above the lowest heat that my stove top can be on. So I'm gonna pull this off and I'm going to flash freeze these. I need to lay this out flat then. Um, and I'm gonna do all of them. There's 12 in this pack and I am really excited about these. I think the girls are gonna love them. One other little note I wanted to make was about this pan. I've had it for a long time, but if you're looking for a really great, inexpensive, non-stick pan that is non-toxic, and you can also use metal utensils on this, I don't even know what it's made out of. I should probably know that, but I just know that it's non-toxic and it's a really great price, so I'll remember to link this below. And other than that, I'm gonna keep going, keep these rolling, and then get started on some other things. This has been doing a natural release for about eight minutes, so I'm gonna just let out the rest of the steam. Okay, now that that little red guy back there dropped, that means that all the pressure is out of it, so you can open it up. And there's our pretty cauliflower. So basically I'm going to take and dump the water out of here and keep the cauliflower inside. Then I'm going to add some butter, some sour cream, some salt and pepper. And sometimes I put a little garlic powder, onion powder, that kind of thing. And then I take my immersion blender, go through, make it all nice and creamy. Then I'm gonna put them in this pan, these two pans, I'm gonna divide them up. And then I'm going to put some shredded cheese on top and then when I want to get them out and heat them up all I'll have to do is pull them out put them in the oven until they're heated completely through so even if you're baking something else for dinner whether it's at 400 or 350 or whatever you can just stick this in until it's as hot as it needs to be the whole way through the mashed cauliflower
next recipe I'm a little bit nervous about making just because it has active dry yeast in it and it's definitely something I haven't worked with a lot. So you guys might see a flop here, I don't know, but hopefully it all works out. So what I'm gonna be making is basically like pigs in a blanket, but a gluten-free version. I will leave the recipe below because there's a lot of details that kinda go into it to make it work correctly, make the yeast activate and all of that. So basically the instructions say to put warm water in here with some sugar and then you add the yeast and make it activate. I actually have the oven um, on a really low temperature. I heated it up to a low temperature and then turned it off to proof the dough when it's done. Another thing it said is to get your butter and eggs out ahead of time so that they have time to get to room temperature. So as you can see, it seems a little tricky, but if you're into a challenge, I think it could be something that could be really great, especially if you do need gluten-free recipes. So we're gonna go ahead and try this out and I will show you as I go along how the results come out.
Okay, so I've got the dough all mixed up here and you can cover this with like saran wrap or I actually have this from Norwex. It's like a silicone cover and I'm going to put this in the oven. Um, it is turned off. It was just heated up to the lowest setting and then I turned it off. So it's got kind of just a warm incubating station for the dough to rise and it says it needs to rise for 90 minutes which is perfect. I can um, work on my other recipes while I'm waiting for this to rise. You're basically gonna cut this into triangles and then roll it up to make the blanket part of the pigs in a blanket. And you do not need a mixer to make this. There is instructions on the recipe on how to make it without a mixer. I just have this mixer and it makes doing dough projects a lot easier. I am super excited about trying this recipe. Um, this is something that's kind of been in the back of my mind for a while. So we're gonna do some crunchy fish sticks. I picked up this tilapia at Aldi. The recipe does call for a whole pound. This isn't quite a pound, so, so this will be kind of a trial run. I don't know, we'll see how it turns out and then I can decide if I wanna make a bigger batch. So you basically need pork rinds, almond flour, an egg, and then some Old Bay seasoning. It does call for salt and pepper, but I already know this has salt in it. So I think I'm just gonna go with what I've got. This already also has salt on it. So I'm not going to add extra salt. So basically you cut this fish into strips. The, uh, it says to do uniform sized, and I'm going to be doing this in my air fryer. So I have to preheat my air fryer at 350 degrees. And then basically you just put these through like an egg bath, tossing them in the almond flour, and we're gonna crunch up the pork rinds. I used this before as a topping on a casserole as like a crunchy little part of the casserole on top. I crunched these up and it worked perfectly. So if you're needing an extra crunch that's gluten-free or just simply low carb, because I do also some keto stuff. I personally eat keto um, a good part of the time, so does my husband. So if you need an extra crunch, these are a great way to go.
All right, so just to recap, we've got the dough proofing in the oven, the, ch the I almost said cheese sticks, the fish sticks in the air fryer, and now, while that's all going on, I'm going to make up my cookie dough bites, or you could call them fat bombs. If you're familiar with keto, we eat a lot of high fat, and so this is one way to get it in, a really delicious way, and I keep these in the freezer just for whenever I want something to eat, and I have made these a few times before. In fact, I do get messages pretty regularly that you guys try them out and love them, and you guys are making them yourself, so, if you're new around here, this is a super simple recipe and it's a way that you can eat um, something that's sweet that's a little more on the healthy side. And you could put regular sugar in this. Um, you don't need to tweak it that way. You could use regular peanut butter. This is just 100% peanuts. It doesn't have added sugar. But I've used dairy-free cream cheese as well. So I will be typing out the recipe and leaving this in the description box. Um, and oh another question i get is a lot of questions about this measuring cup because i use it for mayo and peanut butter so basically you just put the ingredients in the top and then you can press it out it's just so much easier to measure out things that are sticky and i will leave a link below for this as well just because every time i show it in a video you guys want to know where you can get one and they're definitely a super handy kitchen gadget so this is extremely easy you basically put everything into a mixing bowl mix it all up and then scoop it out onto some parchment paper on a plate or something like that. Put it in the freezer, have them all flash freeze, just get solid, and you can throw them in a container or a bag and then store them in the freezer. You could maybe store them in the refrigerator. I think they might get a little too soft to be quite honest. So I think the freezer is the best place for these. Or just stevia sweetened chocolate chips that I like to use, but right now this is what I have around. And let's get it all mixed up. So my dough, I think, is good to go. It's a little more poofy, and I think it's ready to be rolled out. So I'm gonna roll it out in a big circle and then cut it, and I need to get my hot dogs out of the refrigerator. So basically, you just want a good beef hot dog. Um, if you are 
for sure needing gluten-free everything double check that your hot dogs are gluten-free because they do add a lot of fillers in them and then you just roll them up in the little triangle that you make and then I also have some everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's that I'm gonna sprinkle across the top of them and then I also have a everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's so you do an egg wash over them and then I'll be sprinkling that across the top of them So I took a second, got everything kind of cleaned up. So this is something I've shown you guys before. This video is not sponsored by Keto Crate, although I do have a link that I will leave in the description box to get $10 off your first box. So I get this every single month, and if you're somebody that is low carb or even gluten free, I think pretty much everything they have in their box is always gluten free. Um, this is a really fun subscription box. You can do try it out for just one month, or you can get it reoccurring, or you can get it every three months. You 
you can kind of set it up however you want it to be. But the reason I'm even showing you this, and by the way, I have figured out like how much it costs for everything that's in the box, and you're definitely getting a deal by doing it through Keto Crate. Plus, you don't have to buy an entire box of one thing and don't know if you like it. Kind of gives a little bit of a fun way to try out different things. And then another thing they also send you is like little coupons and stuff for other things, and you can get access to coupon codes on their website as well. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling about all of this, um, but what I'm gonna be making is actually these banana caramel muffins. I think they look pretty simple. I think I need four eggs, um, some butter, and then some apple cider vinegar to just mix them up. They look super yummy. I'm a big banana fan. So I'm actually gonna make these in my little uh, muffin silicone mold that I use a lot. If you guys watch me regularly, you know that I use that. It's just from Amazon and it's super handy. So I'm gonna mix this up and get these in the oven. So the girls were doing some test tasting for me today, and what was your favorite thing that you got to taste? Uh, the hot dogs. The hot dogs, you like those a lot? They didn't turn out quite like mommy wanted, and but a lot of people ask about what they actually eat and what they like to eat. How's the faces? You making funny faces? Do you want to make a really funny face for me? <laughs> I know these don't look like much. I wish so bad you guys could smell them right now. It's literally making our house smell so delicious. So, so good. They're super hot. I'm going to obviously flash freeze them and then put them in a Ziploc bag just like I did with the other stuff. But I hope that this video inspired you guys. If you're new here, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. I do lots of homemaking, cooking, and motherhood style content. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to leave a comment below. I love responding to the comments I can get to and hearing from you guys. And I'll see you guys in my next video.